Vsauce, Kevin here, and I'm an idiot. I am the Duke of the Dull and Dumb-Witted. I am breathtakingly brainless. I am fabulously fat-headed, disastrously doltish, and confoundingly cretinous. I've spent 10 years making hundreds of videos celebrating knowledge and creativity. I've highlighted the achievements of some of the smartest minds in science and math. I've learned a lot along the way, and maybe you have too. But for the last few weeks, I've been pursuing peak stupidity. And uh, it's going pretty well. The fact is, I hope this video makes you dumber. Because sometimes being an idiot is the difference between life and death. Here's how. Hold on, I gotta get this barbecue sauce off my face. It's like literally burning my skin. Okay, hang on. Oh, this is for a child. Okay, I am going to smell like barbecue sauce for the rest of this video, but it's what I do for you. Okay, here's how. In 1942, psychologist Alexander Luchins administered a problem-solving test using water and differently sized jars. The goal is to fill and empty those jars with water in a combination to get the desired volume. You've got an unlimited supply of water and you can throw out as much as you want. In problem number one, jar A holds 29 ounces and jar B holds three ounces. The goal is to measure 20 ounces. So you'd fill the 29 ounce jar and use that to fill the three ounce jar three times. 29 minus three, minus three, minus three, leaving you with 20 ounces. This is not a paradox. Problem two adds a third jar. This time jar A is 21 ounces, jar B is 127, and jar C is three ounces. We have to get to 100 ounces. And that's also pretty easy. 127 minus 21 minus three minus three equals 100. The third problem is a little bit trickier, but now we know how to solve these. Jar A holds 14 ounces, jar B holds 163, and jar C holds 25 ounces. Your goal is to get 99 ounces. You can fill the 163, then pour two 25s and one 14. For 163 minus 25 minus 25 minus 14 equals our 99. Once you're locked into the successful strategy, you're on autopilot. Fill the biggest jar and use the other two smaller jars to reduce it until you've got the right amount. Got it. All right, one more. Jar A holds 23 ounces. Jar B holds 49 ounces. Jar C holds three ounces. We need 20 ounces. So. 49 minus 23 minus 3 minus 3 equals 20, right? Ro well, yeah, actually, that is, that is right. But it's not the most efficient solution. We could just fill jar A with 23 ounces and then pour 3 ounces into jar C and have the 20 ounces that we need. This time, we don't need this largest jar at all. Learning an algorithm to solve these problems actually made us a bit stupider. Luchins found that after giving six problems that involved filling the largest jar B and then taking away different amounts using jar A and jar C, the research subjects were locked into using all three jars to solve each problem. They didn't even see the simpler solution. The final problem, 28, 76, and 3, with a goal of 25, could only be solved efficiently by using the two smaller jars, 28 minus 3. Many of the subjects tried to apply their algorithm and immediately said the problem was impossible. Impossible. They'd gained too much knowledge. They were too experienced. They'd become so smart that they got stupid. Welcome to the Einstein-Wong effect. 
Einstellung is a German word that roughly translates as mindset. It describes the overall method and frame of reference for solving a problem. When Luchens conducted his experiment, he gave a second group that problem that contained two possible solutions as their very first task. Most of them instantly recognized the simpler solution because they weren't trapped in the big jar method of thinking about the problem. It wasn't that group B was smarter, it was that group A had learned just enough to make them dumber. Oh, and some of the people who were shown the simpler solution after they declared the final problem was impossible, they got mad. <laughs> like, they got really, really mad. In his paper, Mechanization in Problem Solving, Luchens wrote, Realizing it, he is embarrassed by the blindness and stupidity he showed while solving them, puzzles how it was possible, and feels shame at having been blinded to such a degree, rendered so incapable of reasonable action of intelligent procedures. Basically, some were upset that they felt dumb and then decided to take that anger out on the experiment itself. In a footnote, Luchens explains, instead of viewing their responses as stupid, some of these subjects remarked heatedly that the tasks or the instructions were stupid. They were embarrassed because they felt stupid and they felt stupid because they were too smart. They'd have been smarter if they were stupider. It's it's a vicious cycle. The Eichstellung effect is a serious cognitive force, and it's so strong that when a similar experiment used eye-tracking software to show whether expert chess players could recognize a simple solution after a specific series of moves, they literally did not even see it. Their brains wouldn't let them see it. Kinda like how you can't see that my face is not flat. This is actually a concave photo of my face. As you can see when I turn it, this is not at all a flat image, but when seen straight on, your brain automatically fills in that hollow shape and projects it outward because it's programmed to see faces that way. Grand Illusions has a hollow face Einstein mask that really shows just how biased our visual systems are in favor of seeing faces as convex. Your brain won't allow you to see the hollow face for the concave shape it truly is because its shortcut supersedes reality. It's why the phrase, I can't unsee it, exists in the first place. Here's a different example. Excuse me, me. There's an old riddle about a plane crashing or a Starship Enterprise crashing on an international border and being asked where to bury the survivors. Your brain gets so wrapped up in processing what you know that a country's borders could be relevant in determining how to deal with the situation, that a certain number of people died in the crash, and all the other details we're used to thinking about that it takes a minute to realize that Survivors don't have to be buried at all. The Einstellung effect has created a short-term cognitive illusion that turns a simple, obvious scenario into a ridiculous brain teaser. Sometimes it's just better to know a lot less. In a 1999 paper called The Recognition Heuristic, Goldstein and Gigerenzer describe a psychological experiment asking which of two cities had a larger population, San Diego or San Antonio. A group of Germans answered correctly more often than a group of Americans. The Americans likely considered the populations of Texas and California, whether they thought the cities were growing, and a ton of other factors. The Germans? Well, more of them had heard of San Diego and not San Antonio, so they figured the famous city was bigger. The end. That's it. The less is more effect actually made them more likely to be right. 
And we've just recently figured out that being dumb can make you smart, right? Wrong. We've actually known about this problem for a really long time. In 1620, Francis Bacon wrote in Noam Organum that the human understanding, when it has once adopted an opinion, either as being the received opinion or as being agreeable to itself, draws all things else to support and agree with it. Bacon didn't know the cognitive science behind that phenomenon, but he had the basic idea right. For efficiency's sake, your brain tends to process new things by drawing on the knowledge it currently possesses. It's why I can't make this egg stand up. Come on, egg. Work with me here. Please stand. The task here is to balance this egg on one of its ends. And uh, it's not really working out for me too well. In Girolamo Benzoni's 1565 History of the New World, he wrote that Christopher Columbus challenged a group of noble Spaniards. Gentlemen, I will lay a wager with any of you that you will not make this end stand up as I will, naked and without anything at all. I don't know why he had to be naked. That's kind of weird. They tried and failed, just like I've been trying and failing. And then Columbus just kind of smashed the egg on the table and look, it, it stood up. He wasn't trapped by Einstein. And neither was Alexander the Great, who solved the puzzle of the Gordian Knot in the fourth century BC. The knot was so complex and so intricate, a lot more complex and intricate than this. This is a pillowcase. That anyone who could untie it would immediately be declared king of Phrygia. He just cut it in half with his sword. Something like that. Kind of like the way that Indiana Jones was badly outmatched by an expert swordsman and then he just shot him with his gun. Everyone has understood this seemingly forever, and a recognition of the Einstein effect is deeply rooted in Asian philosophies. In Zen Buddhism, the term Shoshin refers to the beginner's mind, an attitude of openness and eliminating the constraints of experience and knowledge. Zen and Taoist meditators try to achieve the Mushin, the state of a mind without a mind, free from attachments and thoughts. In Japanese martial arts, Zanshin is total awareness, not just focusing on what you know or think you know, but letting every possibility present itself, even when it's simple. But this isn't just about illusions, ancient philosophy, or solving cute riddles. Understanding the impact of Einstein can literally save lives. In the 1970s, a cardiologist named Lee Goldman compiled data on heart attack cases and found that taking an ECG reading and answering three basic questions could determine whether someone was actually having a heart attack. When this shortcut decision tree was implemented at Cook County Hospital in Chicago, the results were incredible. It beat the old diagnosis method by 70%, and the hospital found that highly trained, experienced doctors diagnosed the most serious cases correctly 75 to 89% of the time, while the three-step quick and dirty method was right over 95% of the time. Depending on a well-educated, extremely knowledgeable professional, actually made things worse. People died because we were too smart. We are obsessed with being smart and knowing things. It's why I'm so curious about science and math and people. And honestly, it's why this channel exists. And look, it's important to know stuff and have experience. And it's important to have a mechanized mind. Luchin said, 
mechanized responses have a place in one's behavior. They possess the advantages of releasing one from the bother of finding new responses to recurring everyday situations. They equip one with precise, ready, and speedy responses to certain aspects of his environment. And they free the mind so that it can more adequately deal with complicated tasks. Yeah, but he then went on to say, when a habit ceases to be a tool discriminately applied, but becomes a procrustean bed to which the situation must conform, when in a word, instead of the individual mastering the habit, the habit masters the individual, then mechanization is indeed a dangerous thing. Intelligence, experience, and knowledge are freedom, and they can also be a prison that takes away your freedom to think differently. Your brain is the greatest computer ever invented, but it can also constrain your creativity and limit your potential. We all want to get smarter, become more creative, and solve bigger and more advanced problems in everything from the video games we play to the society we live in. There's so much pressure to be smart, and it's just not always about that. Sometimes you just gotta get stupid. And as always, thanks for watching.